Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be working on some more visual effects for the dark following. And I thought I would just show you the whole process of how I might go about making a shot in real time because there's loads of shots. So there's going to be probably 200 plus visual effects shots for this one film. I thought maybe, you know, so far I've been showing you the backwards process of the finished product and then going through layer by layer. But I thought it'd be good to show you guys my process of problem solving and actually producing a shot from scratch. So I'm going to show you right now the finished shot and then you'll see what we're going to look at. So you'll be looking right now at the finished shot on your screen. And now we're going to go and see how about we get there now. I have no idea how we're going to get there. I have some ideas, uh, but this is part of the problem solving aspect of visual effects making is there are a thousand ways you could do a single effect. So you're going to see how I go about doing it. And if you have any ideas or tips or tricks or recommendations as to how I could have done things differently, or you see something that I do that is different to how you would have done it, please let me know in the comments. It's always interesting to learn about other people's techniques. And if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. That really does help us out. All right, let's get stuck into it. So we just have our normal After Effects file right here. Nothing there, it's just five seconds long. Uh, this composition. And what do we need? So let's first of all, just chuck a black solid on there so that anything that falls through transparency wise goes to black because this is going to be a space shot. Um, now, what do we, the Cosmos. A picture of the cosmos that i just got from the internet somewhere there we go that's way too big uh, uh zoomed in the shot's actually really nice and uh detailed but we don't need it to be like that uh i usually work in the half edit the half resolution editing because uh you still get a pretty good quality from it but it just saves on the preview and render times while you're trying to view everything it doesn't take ages to render everything out so half is pretty fine now that's quite bright um and the other thing we want to do is also add a bit of camera blur because we don't want space to be in focus we want the camera lens blur uh we want the spaceship that's going to be here to be in focus so we put that about 10 cool and it's still quite bright so what we're going to do is put some curves and as well just bring it down Bring the whites up, the highlights a bit. We don't want it too contrasty either. So actually we could bring it down a little bit there and then bring the darks down. Now, if we play around with the transparency, like that's obviously nothing. That's a bit too much. So have it like there. I mean, the, the image is purple on its own. And if you haven't noticed already, I like the color purple, especially for these films. But we could add a hue saturation here. Play around with the different colors for this galaxy. See right there, we get some cool looking effects. Um, go for blue. That's quite cool. That turquoise and the purple there. I'm going to tint it just a bit more to the blue just to distinguish it a little bit better from any of the other space shots we've done. Cool. Color wise, pretty happy with that. We can also play around with the lightness here as well. See like that boosts everything up. We don't want that. Bring that down a bit more. Cool, because we don't want there to be so much happening on screen that it's just a mess, especially with stars. It's essentially just loads of dots and pixels, which can get a bit messy. So we can always play around with these levels afterwards once we, once we have our foreground elements there. But for now, that's quite a nice template to work with. So there we go. Now, I'm going to drag this aerial explosion in, which is an actual actual action visual effects or action VFX asset that is just there on its own. There's no energy in this shot at the moment. We'll get to parenting and adding camera shake and everything to it later. But for now, we'll just leave it like that. Now, lighting in space, there's no bounce lighting. So technically half of the side of this should not be lit uh, unless we're assuming the sun is coming from the front angle where our camera is, which could be the case and we're viewing it from the side. So it could work, but either way, we're definitely going to need to add some contrast to this. 
because yeah space there we go that's already looking way better than without it looks too flat there we go that looks really nice now now the other problem we have now is that the when the actual explosion happens it's way too bright way too bright so what we can do is keyframe the curves to actually here keyframe there because you see the light values essentially just peaking all the way along this top bit which for the blacker smoke values is fine because nothing's ever reaching maximum peak brightness but here it's obviously crushing that color which doesn't look great so we can bring that down still keep that contrast in there a bit and hopefully as we play yeah see it's that graph is now moving now which means we get that nice contrast on the smoke by the end but the beginning isn't too overblown hue saturation again just to make that explosion a bit more of a sort of ready color as opposed to that yellow just looks nice and warm and it always goes a bit pink there actually if you take that off it's more red i quite like that that's cool now which way is the explosion going it's actually the explosion is coming towards us but the fire is coming off to this less left side so i'm actually going to scale unlink the scaling values so that when we scale it's not doing both at the same time see when i drag either one on the x or y it's doing both uh, which is generally what you'd want uh, this time we just want to flip it around the other way so let's do minus 139 and you'll see our shot is now flipped and let's relink it again which means that now when we rescale it it's all going to scale properly again but we've just flipped the x-axis over there so now when explosions happen when explosion happens it kind of works a bit better in that the impact is going to be coming from the left side to the right hitting and the fire the fireball is going to be pushing out to that right side so we're going to keep the saturation of everything a bit lower uh, because we're going to do all the color grading and everything in premiere afterwards so we want this image to be as flat as possible so that when i get it into premiere i can compare it to the rest of the footage that it's in line with in the sequence and can have as much control over it as possible in Premiere. If I did everything here, uh, I might end up with it being too contrasty, certain colors being too overblown compared to the rest of the grade. So when you're actually doing your compositions, unless this is going to be your final, final shot that you're going to send out, if you're going to do any color grading afterwards, still try and keep the saturation and even the contrast um, as low as possible so that you have as much to play with as you can. I mean, in, in saying that, I, I could actually uh, could actually decrease that such that uh, contrast a little bit more then there just again, so I have a bit more room to play with in the Premiere edit. But you see, the black values aren't completely black compared to the background, so this means we're going to have to bring this up a little bit more. And there we go. Just followed my own advice there. Now, what we want from the actual storytelling of this shot is we want the ship to warp to get to about here. Something to happen, it warp and the explosion hits. So the explosion can probably move along a bit in the timeline. We've got five seconds. I think that explosion is actually happening a bit too slow for the impact that we want it to have. So let's go on time, enable time remapping. Let's go to, uh, let's just grab the end, bring it all the way along. So what this is doing is this final keyframe is essentially the last frame. And when you're moving this along now, you're squishing the frames down. So this is now going to be a lot faster than it initially was. You'll see now the difference way quicker than it was. So we can push that along. Just has a bit more impact in it now than before. When you're dealing with explosions, think about the scale of it as well. The larger an explosion, the slower it should look. And the smaller an explosion, the quicker it should look. So we might adjust the timings again of this just to adjust for how we end up with the size of the ship. But for now, I think that's the kind of speed I want it to go out for the impact that we're going for. Okay, cool. So what else What else do we want? We have a look here at my little visual effects folder. 
action VFX. What have I got that we could use? Um, kind of want some sort of energy burst to show that the ship is warping. So let's go with a. I got this light pack, which all of this is free. And vapor? No. Ricochet. Smoke. Side gun smoke. Okay. Cool. I kind of like that as a sort of burst of energy. So what we can do is load that in. Scale that right down. And that's uh, quite a quick effect. I'm going to apply a screen blending mode. We're going to do the same thing so that it's facing the same way. Scale. Untick the link. Minus 28. Now the smoke should go that way. Excellent. We want it to hit the same time that that explosion is happening. And we want it to be underneath the explosion. So that's pretty cool. It's still a bit big. So we can scale. Oh, scale that down. Ah, see, I didn't link it back. Got to link it back there. Cool. Basically, that is going to act as our effect to show that the ship is warping into space it's getting some momentum and explosion is happening on the contact with it that's pretty good we could maybe move that over a little bit more just move that there let's add a bit of hue and saturation to this side gun side gun smoke just change the color of that so we can distinguish it uh what do we want to do let's bring that lightness down colorize it which essentially, if you have a black and white image or an image which is just grayscale, changing the hue won't do anything because there's no color for it to change. But if you click on colorize, it will essentially tint everything a specific color and you can change this hue value like that. So let's make it match a bit more of the explosion color so that it looks like the light is affecting the color of that smoke there. So orange color, there we go. We can bring our saturation down. Doesn't need to be too much, but just enough. Just enough. So it looks a bit like dirt, actually. We don't need to do that. I always end up having brown colors. I'm trying to go for orange or red. Sometimes you get into that brown sort of territory and it can not look very nice. So try and keep that saturation there. Okay, that's looking all right. Now, obviously, we need to actually <laughs> add in what is launching to the side so let's make our little rocket explosion actually the other thing we want to do here is give it some sort of atmosphere because right now it looks like they're in the deep depths of space and you're not going to get an explosion like that with sort of gravitational effects or even that amount of oxygen in it in space because it's space and we want there to be a bit of sound as well if they were just in the depths of space you wouldn't hear any sound so we want to imply that they're still close enough to the atmosphere of this planet that these sort of physical assets and settings would make sense. So what we're going to do is duplicate this black layer, black solid, put it on top. We are going to invert. And now what we're going to do is come out here and we're just going to mask kind of like that. Yeah. Now that looks absolutely terrible. So let's rename this uh, atmosphere solid base black. There we go. Okay. Let's change this so we have a bit of understanding of what it is. I'm just going to make it gray. And now double tap M. You can bring up the mask options. Let's bring up this feathering just so that it blends in a lot nicer. Now, see already we're getting a nice look and we want this to be above, uh, yeah, above the cosmos and above the black layer. What we could even do as well is tint. Tint this so the white is a bit more of a bluey color. Let's give it that Earth-like atmosphere, even though it's not on Earth, but that planetary ozone layer. There we go. Now that's still quite here. The opacity is still quite a lot. So we're still going to bring that opacity down to about there. 
And then what we want to do with the Cosmos as well is do the opposite. So what we're going to do, press G to bring out the pen tool. Kind of do the opposite sort of mask. Double tap M. Bring up that. Just so it looks like the atmosphere is blending a little bit better. Um, let's bring that opacity back up. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's looking, that's looking better. Underneath the cosmos. Just getting that more of a gray. So you see that it's all about layering. So the atmosphere solid on top was too, blended too far in. Put it under that cosmos. The cosmos mask is going to that deep black color. So what's strange now actually is because we've decided where the light is going to be different, we're actually getting that glow from the left side. So the explosion maybe doesn't need to be as dark as we uh, as we initially said it had to be. So what if we go to that curves value again, brought it up, just to match that lighting a little bit better. Yeah, see? Doesn't look as out of place now as it did before. It was way too contrasty considering there was a light on this side. And just so coincidentally, the lighting matches the lighting of this pre-set of this pre-made stock asset. So the light's hitting on the left side, the right side is a bit darker. Could he potentially rotate it ever so slightly? And color-wise, seems to match a lot better. If I actually go back to the first film, I might just have... Now, I'm really bad at labeling folders. I'm sure I'm not the only one. The better you can get at organizing the better your life will be. Just for now, and so we know what's going on, I'm just going to use this side asset that I made of the old ship from the first film just to represent Jamie here. So again, scale that to minus six. Oops, minus six. Okay. And what we want to do is apply, let's just call it Jamie mock ship. Change that to be like a perp, something really striking so that the outlines are very clear. And we want to apply motion blur, which is clicking this. So it means any movement we do will apply motion blur, which is a great way of selling the idea of inertia. Uh, without it, everything can look quite static and look like something's wrong. Uh, I'll show you the difference between it being off and on later, but let's move that underneath these explosion effects so that we see there that would cover it, which is really nice with these pre-keyed assets. It's a lifesaver. And what we want is, I think the angle of it could actually change a bit if we did it more like that, just so it's not so straight on, which also would mean we need to adjust the angle of the smoke to fire more like that way as opposed to that way. Let's take this, where are we? Jamie Mock ship. I think it could be sized down a little bit more even, so let's put it down to four. <laughs> Forgot to link it. Four. That's a good size. A bit reminiscent of our shot from the first film. Could still rotate a little bit more. Is that minus? Yeah, minus 10. And what we want to happen is we're going to press P to bring up... Oh, P, that's going to bring up our position values. We're going to click the little stopwatch there at a keyframe. Go to the very beginning. And what we're going to do is move our ship. There, decide the final side position afterwards. It's going to get to there and move it to where the explosion happens. Ugh. Use the arrows to move it down. And it's very quickly after this point going to shoot off. So if we move it way off in that same trajectory, not that far apart. You see it turns into a real blur. If I take that motion blur off, it's just straight uh, with that motion blur applied. Looks really nice. So let's just watch that see what it looks like. I think it could even go quicker, you know. Yeah, that looks way more like it's warping. Bang. Okay, now I think this is actually happening too close to the left side of the screen. So let's actually make this happen more centrally. Let's make this happen a bit more centrally. Let's move these assets here. And we can start this a bit closer 
The rotation of the ship doesn't match the trajectory. So let's go to minus 12, minus 14. Now it's a bit more aligned. But even then, it's still not great. Minus 16. There we go. Bang. So the one key element we're still missing from all of this is obviously the actual missile following it and hitting it just as the explosion happens. So for that, what we're going to do, search for a lens flare, flare. Right, flare, take that, chuck it on. We can do a little mask. Kind of like this. Now, I usually have the red giant lens flare add-on which i will switch to later but i can't afford it right now it's annoying you have to subscribe to it i find I'd, i would love to just buy it one off as opposed to keep having to subscribe to it every year sometimes there's a deal on sometimes there isn't so i just never know how much it's going to be in this year unfortunately i just couldn't afford it so let's apply that screen mode to it change that masking feather and if possible i'm gonna apply some curves just so that the lens flare brightness sticks out a bit better cool like in that let's push some red values in there a bit more okay and let's change this to be red now how do we want this to go if we align the rotation of this with the ship the, the flare kind of gives the sense of danger it really does and if we just position this flare, I will just call it missile. What we can do is parent everything else to the flare. And location wise, we want it to hit here. Minus 14. We can use the same number. P. Yeah, there at the same time the ship does. And then trajectory wise, we want it to be behind the ship. Starting maybe there. And when we play, that's looking cool. I'm going to move that below the explosion as well. So now let's see. But maybe above the ship. So that because you see here, if I had it below there, that looks a bit naff. So let's move it above. Bang. You can see the shape of the shot is starting to come together a little better. And with the missile, let's move this that way a bit more. Just so, let's bring that mask feather down just a bit. So you get the idea it's streaking behind. Let's bring that mask down. There we go. Looking a bit more like a missile. Now, obviously there, what we want to happen is essentially we want to keyframe this mask to give it the illusion that it's still moving inwards and that it's vanished. So just do some sort of job like that. That's cool. And we don't need to go any further than there so we can cut that off. Now let's see what that looks like. Too short, almost too short. So let's move that in. Even again, could be quicker. There we go. Now, actually, I think we could almost move all of this even further to the right side because I want to create that sense of timing. And here you're kind of, it's composition wise, we're looking way too far to the left side here. So that's fine. All we have to do is just, if we move our explosion first, so we know where we want it to actually explode. And all we have to do is just change where the ship is before it launches. Move it to there. Move that start point. Same thing with the ship. Want it to end up there. Now that, we can move this way further back. <laughs> Give it a sense of bit, bit more of a sense of speed. There we go. That's looking way better. <laughs> Bang. What's really going to help sell this shot? Because right now it's very static and it's just a bit boring. My top trick to do to help get things looking a bit more engaging. We're going to add a null 
down here. We're going to call it shaky, shaky. For no other reason then, that's just what I want to call it. I'm going to make it green. And we're going to parent eh, ooh, everything. Are we going to parent everything to it? The idea of parallax is coming into mind here because everything that's closer to the camera is going to move faster and more violently than everything further off in the distance of the camera because that's how depth works. But for this shot, is it going to be necessary? I don't think so. For now, let's just play it safe. And easy and let's just pair it everything by clicking on this little pick whip dragging it to shaky shaky nothing has changed that's because there's nothing happening yet so if we parent uh sorry p for position hold down alt and click on a little stopwatch i'll bring up this little transform position here and what we can do type wiggle open bracket five 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 comma five. Don't press enter. This always messes it up. Don't press enter after that. Just click off of it. Because if you press enter, it will make a new line, which you don't want. So you just want to click off. And you'll see what's happening now. Is we get a little bit more camera shake on everything. And actually, we want to apply motion blur to all the layers now because everything is moving. And it'll be very subtle, but it's just enough that everything looks as it should. Now, I think that's shaking almost a bit too much. So we move these numbers down, maybe to like two and three. There, that's that's nice. Now, all I'm going to do for the rest here is uh, in Blender, I'm going to just take an image of the side of the ship and get an image of the missile as well and just import them as PNGs. And then we'll be back into this file uh, to help with the final compositing. Okay, so what I've just done now to give a bit more of a distinction to show that Jamie's actually teleporting away, which wasn't very clear before, because at the moment it's just the ship hits and it's really, it's you blink and you miss it, which is kind of the idea, but we don't want it to be, we want it to still be clear. That, oh, did he get away? Instead of just, if you literally blink at this point, you're going to miss that. So the other thing I've done quickly as well is add a slight scaling on the shaky shaky knoll. Just so we have a bit of a zoom out here, as almost to say like, oh my god, wait, we haven't got this in frame, and to add a bit more realism to the idea that this is an actual camera shot with a camera person holding it, as opposed to a completely CGI piece of video. So the way I did that was literally just scaled from 112.9, very specific, back to 100. I clicked on the little graph editor here, selected both of the points, and clicked on this icon here, which is Easy Ease. Which instead of, no, not the NWA wrapper, without the easy ease, you go from no movement to suddenly it moves and then it stops again. Whereas this easy ease gradually eases into the movement and then eases out of it. So it's a bit softer. The idea of the camera zoom being sped up, then moving at a certain speed and then slowing down as the camera operator moves back to not zooming. So yeah, as you can see, really hard to tell what's going on there. So all I did was duplicate this missile flare, named it Jamie, moved it in, on top of Jamie's ship and just parented it to Jamie mock ship, changed the color to more of a yellow color by using the master hue that I already had on it, desaturated it a bit, and that just helps draw your eye to this top right corner of the screen. If I play it now, it's just a bit more of a visual clue that Jamie did actually make it out of that situation. I know I'm mildly, this is all the beginning of the film. Nothing here is going to spoil anything for the story. Um, because, yeah, we can have Jamie locked up in prison for the entire film. But exactly the entire process of what this sequence entails, well, you're going to have to watch and find out. And lastly, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was uh, to give the idea of momentum and speed. Uh, the last couple of things that I did were to add these streaks. So what I did was take a black solid. Essentially what I did was just add a CC particle world, put the gravity on basically 30 and the velocity to 0 0.83. So that it's pulling everything as downwards as it can without turning it into a straight line. 
and just rotated that black solid to 90 degrees there and parented it to the uh, the missile or the flare but let's call it uh, missile flare just so we know there we go and all that does is it just gives the idea of there is a jet stream behind it even though i didn't want it to be like smoke smoke i still think it gives you that impression of velocity and all i did was duplicate that same black solid essentially attached it to uh to the uh the ship that jamie is on and just made it much smaller again just to give that idea of velocity because without it it's it just kind of it's, it just doesn't sell it and anything you can do that's small and subtle as i say small and subtle effects going an extra mile really helps a lot in selling what you've got so now if we look at it that's very rare and that's looking pretty cool i really like that i actually think the cosmos could be even darker and even lower that opacity maybe on 82 maybe to like 70. Ooh, let's try 50. yeah this just makes jamie's ship stand out a bit better against the stars doesn't get lost in it as much there we go i'm really liking how that's looking now but there's still something missing still want to simulate the idea of an impact because in the moment it just hits it looks cool but there's no feeling in it there's no actual energy impacting from the shot so what i did was select all of the layers right click and did pre-compose and this took us to here now if i take these two layers off so we just had our pre-composed layer here and all that is is exactly what we had before the, just the exact same shot as it was but everything just as one layer and what i did was duplicate the layer and at the point where the impact happens i lay uh, create basically shortened this clip and with the wiggle value if we look on here i applied a really severe 17 and 17 which is really intense shakiness and if i play that through now You'll notice we really get a sense of impact when the explosion happens now with the motion blur applied to that layer as well it looks really cool and you'll notice that i do it a couple of frames after the explosion happens because again in reality you're not going to get that explosion shake hit you as soon as the explosion happens at this distance there's going to be a bit of time as the shockwave comes to actually hit the camera so what's the last thing we're missing? Well, it's the shockwave itself. We can't see the shockwave hitting us, which uh, in real life you would. So what I did was very simple, very easy to do. I just added an adjustment layer. So we do you just go up to uh, layer, new adjustment layer. All I did and just added it on top of everything. So an adjustment layer is basically an invisible layer that any effect you apply will apply to everything below it. So it applies to all of the layers below, which is a really handy thing to do as opposed to doing a single effect and copying and pasting it onto loads of different layers uh, or even doing it on a single uh, pre-composition because it will, uh, even with the pre-composition, we've got two layers here and we want it to apply to multiple layers, everything below it basically. So it just... It's a really simple and an easy way to control effects applying to multiple layers. Now, what I did was add turbulent displace, and that's that's pretty much all this effect was. And if I is there a way to really show you what's actually happening? Oh, if I put the layer on, that would be good. There we go. So let's play this through with the effect, and I'll show you how I did it. So you see now, there's a real shake distortion that happens when the explosion hits, and then it vanishes. So how did we achieve this well essentially all that's happening is these are the settings nothing actually changes on the settings except the evolution to give the idea that there is uh movement within the effect itself but in its full all this is doing is just warping the entire image if i were to go through the evolution right now you'll see that's what's happening it's just warping everything and all i did was just animate it so that there is a warp uh, and the bulges are moving but how do we get it so it looks like it's expanding from this point outwards away from it because that's the shockwave effect so mask around where we want the center of the shockwave to happen 
and just keyframe it so that that mask expands in the way and the shape that you want the shockwave to happen. You'll see that the shockwave is going to go that way quicker and take a while to come to this left side. So that's how the mask is positioned to do so. Just put a small feather. I didn't even put a feather on it. What is wrong with me? There we go. 10, maybe even a bit more than that. 30. That should just help blend that shockwave in a bit better. There we go. See, that's looking really nice. And we're getting the illusion that the warping is pushing out and it's that distortion created from the force of that explosion. And then all I literally did was just T for opacity and just load the opacity from this point where the shockwave is at its maximum. Just bring it down to zero really quick. And then we're back to the original composition. And that's how we created that shockwave explosion really nice and simply using just a wiggle and a turbulent displace with a mask. And that's all it took. Just creates a lot more impact on that same shot. Really cool, really, really cool. It's nice, it's very stylistic and you can go however extreme or non-extreme you want with it. I want it to be quite extreme just because why not? But you can make it as subtle or as crazy as you want that effect to be by just changing the turbulent displace effects, going up with the amount um, and changing the size and the complexity of it, just changing those. And that's it. And there we have our final shot. Here we go. That's a pretty basic setup for this shot. As I say, I'm going to go into Blender and actually get the models that I need for the side of Jamie's ship that he's flying in this film and a side shot for the missile as well. But for now, that's a pretty simple setup of showing a missile catching up to a spaceship and exploding it in space. And once we get this into Premiere and do a bit more color grading on it and everything like that, it's really going to look pretty cool. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning maybe a few tips and tricks about After Effects here. Again, very simple, very straightforward and very easy to do. Just layers, parenting, color correction, positioning, rotation and scaling. That's all this shot is. It's very simple and we get this really awesome looking space effect. So nice and easy. I hope you learned something from today's video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Do consider subscribing. That really does help us out. If you're interested in seeing any more visual effect breakdowns like this or seeing me produce any shots in real time, let me know. That's it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video.